<laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, I thought that you would appreciate a little uh, winter shop update. <laughs> So we finally sent the charger home and it is a dang good thing that we did because <laughs> as you might see behind me and Steve, um, it snowed outside last night. So um, yeah, you're disappointed? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I was kind of happy to see it because it's a change of scenery and it's not so brown outside anymore. So um, anywho, we'll get right on with it. I thought I'd give you a look at what is in the shop right now, what we're going to be starting for winter and kind of where some of these projects are. And we'll give you a look at the underside of the Thunderbird as well. Uh, and that is a little rougher than I guess we had hoped it would be. But uh, fortunately, we've got to tear it down to basically nothing anyway and start over. So it's getting a new chassis, new engine, everything. So you'll get a look underneath there. Uh, first, I'm going to walk you through the shop here. So this is our um, the new edition side of the shop. And it's kind of, you're going to see it backwards because it's flipped around. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm walking, you go past the paint booth and then we're walking through the shop and then you get up here and there's the metal room behind that is the body shop. So I'm going to take you into the metal room right away and we'll take a look at what happened with the Nova and oh no, it went backwards. No, just kidding. Because as we explained before, uh, you fit everything, take measurements and then we brace it. So. Um, it has been, the doors were test fitted and everything. It is braced on the inside uh, at, I think it was 61 and a quarter was what we measured it's supposed to be at. And then it is also braced at the firewall. So all the panels have been removed from the car. Um, the roof structure and quarter structure was prepped and then painted with a rust preventative paint so that when we put the new sheet metal on it, it doesn't rust right away. Obviously all of this is gonna get prepped. Any of the gray with the rust on it is all gonna get sanded back down and um, then prepped appropriately depending on what the exterior covering is gonna be. So the panels are everywhere to be seen. Uh, we've got the roof over here. There's some inner Let's see, what do we got? We've got the quarter extensions, wheel housings, inner and outer wheel housings. There's the trunk lid. And there, it's kind of scattered everywhere because we've got to prep the edges before it goes on the car. So everything, all of the mating surfaces, which would be anything that's indented like here. So that's all going to get sanded. And then it'll have holes drilled in it at about, I don't know, every inch half an inch depending on it, whether it's structural or not and then it will be welded in place refitted remeasured and then welded the only thing that we haven't taken out just yet is the floor and that will be first to go back in then probably firewall then we'll set up the trunk floor and the whole back of the car but um, it's a little bit alarming to see a car in this sort of condition here's a look at what what we've got to do to every one of those new panels so strip the coating punch the holes, and then these are all getting welded to this surface. And then we've got holes drilled in here where we will screw the new firewall panel to this, the firewall structure, and it'll be a, a totally flush surface. And we also use those screws as guide holes from when we did the measurements and all the fitting. So it'll all go right back together. Anything to add? A lot of weld through primer. Yeah, lots and lots and lots. So, moving on out of the metal room. We've got the 67 Chevelle. Now, if you'll remember, this one needed a whole lot of structure repair itself. Uh, and you did see a video of this thing getting its floor welded in place. Yes, that's right. The floor was not welded. So, now... It has its transmission in place. You can see the floor shift there. It's got its Silver Sport Transmissions five-speed Tremec installed. It has a new tilt steering column. And we didn't end up having to replace the carpet. It did actually fit over the changed transmission hump for a manual setup. And 
it's got pedals now. So before it didn't even have a gas pedal. He was just pushing on the little rod that came through the firewall. So now he can actually use his gas pedal and obviously we had to add the clutch because we changed it to the manual trans. Um, we also did speakers in a new package tray in the back there. So that looks nice again. Updated the seat belts in the back. We also updated the structure for the seat belts in the front because they weren't actually bolted to anything. So we made sure that that is a safe setup for him. And I didn't do anything under the hood. So um, what did you do under the hood? Oh, well, we hooked up his heater core for him, kind of rebuilt the heater box. Um, Which is there, that's the heater box. And then <clears throat> well, we changed the oil, put a new steering shaft in. As you can see, the old one was a little bit difficult to get out because this has got uh, some big block headers that are two inch primaries on it. It's smushed. And someone, it's not, supposed to be like that. not us, someone uh, fitted the headers in there, fit the headers in there, excuse me. Fitted, fitted. Um, probably a little too much, uh, but you can see the Z bar. We had to modify the Z bar because this was a, a second design. That's back here that connects the linkage for the clutch for shifting. So it was a kit from SST Transmission, uh, which is Silver Sport Transmissions. Um, but with every kit, there's a little bit of massaging you gotta do. So we took care of that. Now it works. Now we're just waiting on the drive shaft. Uh, part of the kit is they make and high speed balance drive shaft. So that should be here early next week. And then we'll fill the trans, test her out and send it home. Although probably on a trailer, <laughs> sadly, because it snowed and we don't let anything drive on salty roads. So if the roads aren't salty, that's fine. But um, we're very, very excited for this next one. Now I have a little bit of explaining to do because a friend of ours uh, went to SEMA this year and he made up a special little sign which was actually really awesome and then he posted a video of it on facebook so uh, this car's rendering is done we're waiting for the hard copy to arrive here from pinstripe chris chris dunlop thank you so much it looks amazing uh, and so we're gonna show you the little sign and the rendering again here so thank you chris loga for taking that all the way to Las Vegas in 2018 and then bringing it all the way back here for us to enjoy. So he had posted this outside of a booth at, at the SEMA show this year as motivation for us and that is the customer signed uh, rendering from Chris Dunlop of what will be the very modern 59 T-Bird. So, up on the lift, here she is. Now that the charger went home, we have a open bay and we are ready to start this one year project. And if you saw the first video, you know that we are putting a 2017 Coyote engine in it. It is going to be basically a totally modern Mustang wrapped in this body only a much nicer body than what's on it currently because as you can see, we're having some issues with rust. So we were hoping that the quarters weren't quite this bad. Uh, they in fact are worse than I guess we had hoped. So there's gonna be a whole lot of metal repair going on. Can you put a light up in here so you can kind of see the wheel well? So this is inside the passenger side quarter. Uh, it's bedlined and I'm sure that once we strip that stuff off it will we'll know how much of the inner structure is going to have to be repaired but for sure we're going to be doing quarters this is what is supposed to be the quarter lip next to the wheel we're probably going to be going up about four inches on each quarter on both sides with metal repair and coming all the way forward to the door area because this is all shot all the rockers all the way along underneath the door um I could stick my finger in there, but I might get tetanus, so I'm not going to do it. But all of this is going to get repaired correctly. Uh, we don't know yet for sure how much of the floor we're going to have to do, because it is covered in its undercoating still, complete with 
cobwebs and tons of spider egg sacs, <laughs> which are my favorite. And we did drain the oil already, but it was definitely a, a leaky monster. Uh, what do you see up there, Steve? Well, you know, it's a front sump 352 FE Ford. Uh, it looks like a C6 transmission. Um, and we're going, going to be with the custom chassis. We'll end up making it a rear sump for the Coyote engine. Um, and it will be a uh, six speed automatic transmission with a dropout cross member and everything. But, um, you know, it's relatively low miles on this, and it looks like they put new shocks on it, new tires not too long uh, mm -hmm. before they parked it. And tread um, is great on these. A little dry rot, but... Yeah, can't um, use them, but it's got good tread. <laughs> all you guys have seen the power steering that Ford had, and surprising enough, it's leaking. Hmm, that never <laughs> happens, right? Yeah. But... Um, all this that you see under here, all this old technology is going to be gone. And this thing will drive just as a new car. Maybe even better. 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 Um, Definitely more fun. Yeah. So, and, you know, you, as you can tell, it's a unibody car that we're going to be switching to a full frame car. Um, so there's going to be uh, a lot of metal fabrication to the floor to make sure that everything fits uh properly and obviously is secured um, and we're not going to cut anything out of the car until the chassis is here so we can do all our measuring and, and make sure that we're, we're right on and and that's a that's a good tip for any of you people out there to do stuff on your own do not cut anything out until you have your parts mm -hmm. and measure a lot and then measure again so this side isn't any better, uh, especially at the front, right behind this front wheel. That's really no surprise. All of the undercoating is gone. Um, all of, I mean, I could probably get my finger all the way through the floor up in this front section. This would be like right about where the pedals are over here. And it is exactly the same on this side. Obviously no pedals on the passenger side, but it is still just as rotted. So you can kind of see like right into the structure here. Um, we'll take you to the back. We're not gonna be using anything mechanical back here again, but we'll just take a look at it. Um, I mean, structurally it's safe enough to drive. I mean, the, the actual like leaf spring perches and everything are okay. Leaf springs are sprung, but. Yeah. But nothing's gonna like fall off of it per se. It's just rusty. There's back by the gas tank. Um, there's the inner quarters. So these would be like trunk extensions. Those will all have to be done. That is really hard to see. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. There's not, it's supposed to be to about here. That's a lot of rust, wow. Yeah, this side's worse. This side's bad. Um, and that's okay. We're going to do the inner, we'll do the trunk extensions, probably some trunk floor repair, definitely the quarters. Like I said, they'll come all the way to the back and go all the way to the front, and then we'll do the rockers at the front. I do believe the doors needed a little bit of repair as well. Um, we're thinking that these will be chrome, so it will give you an, an appearance that that bumper wraps all the way around the taillights. Um, Steve, you can drop her if you like. Matt, come here. Come on, buddy. Good boy. And it really is a beautiful car to start with. So we're very excited to maintain that appearance and the classic nature of the exterior just with some modern touches. And we do have to go with larger wheels because it will get disc brakes and in order to fit them you're going to need more clearance on the wheels um, there is some damage on the door i mean nothing that is really anything to get too excited about it's all definitely repairable um, one of my favorite features of this car is well it's got all the original tags on it which is so cool 
Um, they did, let's see, oil grease filter October 1. Of what year though? I don't know on that one. But then this one says the oil change was 923 of 66 at 41,000 miles. I just think that's too cool. So we're, we always try and preserve anything like this, especially since we know we're repainting the whole thing. So we're gonna do our best to use a razor blade and scrape that off and then affix it to something um, so that it can go in the car's build book, which we make for every project. And I love how this door is shaped, both sides. You've got basically an entire chunk out of that front fender cowl area so that you can get your feet in there because you're sitting so far forward and the windshield wraps all the way around. It is just a really unique design for this car. Um, looking at the floor, I mean, obviously when you saw the underside, you knew the top was gonna be icky. So once we get the carpet out, we'll actually know what we're dealing with. We will have to do a little bit of a conversion on this center console here because you're going to have the shifter for the automatic transmission. Uh, we're going to keep the radio and gauge appearance as much as possible and make them all modernized. They won't be digital, but they will be compatible with the modern driveline that's going in this car. Headliner is still intact. Doesn't seem to have too much of a mouse issue. So, that's good. We don't like rodents. And engine bay. The hood flips open forward. So as you can see in the engine bay, um, when the customer approached us for this build, uh, he basically just said, I want it to look the same but I want it to, to be a new car, something we can take across the country and not have to worry about. So what I did, first thing that popped in my head was um, the Coyote engine. And I knew there were gonna be some obstacles. You know, I knew that that engine's a rear sump, this one's a front sump. So what I did was I got the measurements for the engine, uh, for the FE engine here, and I got the measurements for the Coyote engine. And we all know how wide the top of the Coyote is, but surprising enough, there's plenty of room in this engine bay for that engine. Because um, the FEs, they're pretty big too. Uh, if I remember correctly, I want to say with this motor and trans, they're also saving about 600 pounds of weight on the front end of this car. Um, the one thing we will have to do is we're going to run electric fans and aluminum radiator. Uh, it does have a power rack and, and pinion steering set up, so um, we're going to end up doing a conversion kit on the front of the Coyote engine so that we can have power steering because, well, those cars have electric steering. So, um, just a bunch of, you know, things that we have to, we plan for and that we put together. Uh, it should go pretty smoothly. Uh, it will have air conditioning, uh, like I said, power steering. It is a naturally aspirated Coyote engine, um, still plenty of power, still will be able to be cruised down the highway at, you know, whatever speed you like to cruise at, 90, totally. <laughs> good to go. And it'll have good enough brakes to stop it. The factory weight on this is about 4,100 pounds, but like I said, with the engine transmission, we're going to lose some weight up front, probably gain some with the chassis. So I'm thinking we'll probably be in at like 3,800 pounds. Um, plenty of power, you know, probably 20 miles per gallon if you yeah. drive it nice. You can keep your foot out of it. You know, it, definitely braking, you know, in 1959, this was your, your brake set up to stop 4,100 pounds. Hmm. Single master, one brake line feeding it, that one rots out. Hope your emergency brake works. And you guys see in the video, hopefully, that this does run. Um, this, 40, this carburetor is not very good, but it runs, it shifts, it stops. It's a Ford 9 inch rear end, and thinking uh, this stuff will just be for sale if anyone's interested. Low miles. Um, I know we had one person ask already, so. Okay. You look really short because the car's right. up high, yeah. <laughs> getting older I'm yeah. 
Well, I don't know what else we can really add to this today. It's getting kind of long in the tooth already. You guys are probably sick of listening to us talk. So um, we'll just take one more quick look in here and go in the passenger door. I mean, the doors open and close great. The door panels are in awesome shape. Um, obviously, they'll be updated. And yeah, it is just going to be a beautiful beautiful car when we are finished with it. It'll keep all the original badging, emblems. Really like how the door handles are set into the door. I think it's a really neat feature. There's a lot of body line design on these cars. A very unique shape. It's going to be fun to do the body work on it. And I say that sincerely. It's going to be fun because flat panels are one thing, but doing stuff like this is just neat. All right, Bob, come on, let's get to work. Okay. <laughs> All right. He forced me to do this this morning right away because he wants to tear into it. So we are going to get started on bagging and tagging the car. We are going to keep all of the old parts. So um, we're not going to use them, but we're going to keep them. So if somebody's looking for original parts off of a low mile 59 Thunderbird, um, let us know and we may be able to help you out with the approval of the owner. So just send us a message and we'll get in touch. So any questions, comments, what have you, thank you so much for following us and supporting us. We don't do any kind of advertising. It's all social media and Facebook. So please share and like our posts so that you can see them and you can stay in touch with us that way. Thanks so much. Enjoy the snow and we'll see you all later. Bye.